Okay, so we're in um, P3-34. Uh, we can do this one as a revolve. Thir 33 didn't quite lend itself to the revolve because we have all of this interior geometry. Um, you know, the contouring region was a better selection. This one has this outside profile that we could generate um, with uh, with cylinders and cutting away, but you know, really the uh, the revolve gives us a a good um, uh, a good quick way of generating this geometry. So, looking at the top plane, keep in mind that the surface is uh, they're showing 19 millimeters, and it's kind of pointing to kind of hard to tell. It looks like it's at the bottom of this. Uh, this face um, for the uh, for the cut, so that kind of makes sense. And then hole location uh, diameter forty. All right, so we'll see what um, what we get there. All right, so we're in millimeters. New part millimeter. Opening up a sketch on the top plane. Going into the center line horizontal center line, infinite length, and we drop that on the uh, the origin. See that it gets the coincident. It has the coincident over there. Um, I'm hesitant to back out of these because a lot of times it will go right back into for construction, but let's see what it does. I'm going to uncheck and go to as sketched. And since this uh, intersects the center line, and my four construction infant length are still off. In the past, I don't know if it's things that I've selected, but I've done complete sketches in construction lines and wondered how that happened. So I want to check for it anyway. All right, so my geometry then, since this is going to be closed, goes back to the center line, does not leave that gap or that region to act as a bore. All right, so geometry. We're going to switch, so there would be radial, that would be diametral. I'm going to go into 40. The diameter at the, uh, the outside is 28. We're staying in that diametral dimension. And then at the um, center we had that five millimeter chamfer. All right, so that jumped to the uh, to the midpoint. I want to escape out of that and escape one more time to get through the selection. All right, and then it comes out, and we can do five millimeters. And then um, yeah, we'll go with the uh, the five by forty five. I also could do five millimeters on the uh, the horizontal and generate. But if we want to change that angle or be able to control that angle later on we need to have it as part of the dimension. All right, so 80 millimeters overall length, and then 50 millimeters. I can't really pick, and I don't want to do the math. Uh, so from the end face, and it grabbed the midpoint again, but that's okay. 50 millimeters gives us our shape. We're ready to revolve, and that gives us our geometry going into the front plane. We'll open up the sketch and I'm going to go with a rectangle. Mainly pick that corner for convenience. Could have just as easily been uh, this intersection from the silhouette edge. All right, so either the, the point at the end or looking for that silhouette edge, we're going to come up 19 millimeters. And because of the con uh, coincidences, that gives me the geometry to extrude cut. And we'll go through all both, except. And then the uh, last piece of geometry. Oh, let's see. I had a 60 millimeter cut. I think I did that last time, too. All right, assuming that it was going to that face. So I need to right click and edit the sketch. We're going to take that coincident off. So highlighting the box and hitting delete on the keyboard and bring it back to coincident, but I don't want to necessarily get to uh, to the midpoint of that uh, that edge. So let's go ahead and place the dimension. It may end up there, but 
Nope, probably not. <laughs> All right, so since I'm already in the feature and the feature was created, I just needed to make that adjustment. We go ahead and do an accept. And then I can go back to the isometric view and we'll pick up the 12 millimeters through. And this could be a whole wizard item. If we thought that this would come back and be a partial or change to a threaded hole at some point. So 12 millimeters, even a countersink or counterbore on that face would um, be, uh, be something we could pick on the geometry. All right, so there's no horizontal relation to the origin. So select, control, select to get it there. And then we need a dimension. It's 30 back from the nose. And then this is going to be, since there's no depth call out, then it will go through the part. All right, so we have our shape. Because of the curvature, these do look kind of uh, kind of strange from the top, since we have the angle, but then the uh, the cut. Those are kind of a compound, um, uh, a compound strange. It looks a little weird to me along that face, so I just wanted to uh, to check it. All right, we're ready to save this one and go to our next.